Hi guys, this is Erica from Gokche Capital. Now before I begin, be sure to click subscribe and turn on the notification bell. If you were to walk on a cool January morning in the town of Pacific Grove, you may wonder why there are still leaves on the trees. That is, until you looked closer and saw the leaves were actually hundreds of butterflies. But more on the disappearing monarch later. For first, if you love butterflies, you may want to plant a butterfly garden. So in today's video, we have the top things you should know. Number one, how do you create a butterfly garden? Well, first you make a plan. Find out which species of butterflies are in your area and which ones you want to attract. Then select a site. It will need to have at least five to six hours of full sunlight each day, as well as shelter and water and be free from pesticides. Step three is to know your soil. We recommend using compost to boost the soil structure and add nutrients. After that, you can select your plants, which leads me to number two. What flowers attract butterflies? Butterflies need both nectar and food. So you'll want a mixture of a few different kinds of plants, including perennials, which are the traditional brightly colored plants with shallow blossoms you see in butterfly gardens. Some examples include milkweed, coneflowers, and asters. You'll also want some flowering shrubs, such as sweet spire and elderberry, and then nectar-rich flowers, which should be planted in groups instead of separately. Some examples include petunias, cosmos, and lantana. In general, it's a good idea to focus on native plants, as these will likely work well for the local butterfly species in your region. But you'll also want to speak with a local nursery to understand the preferences of your local species. Number three, having said all this, don't forget to also plant flowers that serve as food sources for caterpillars. Here are some of the best flowers you can plant to support butterflies in various stages. Aster flowers, which are great for the pearl crescent butterfly, butterfly weed, which along with milkweed offers monarch butterflies a critical food source. The passion flower is great for the zebra longwing butterfly, which is most often found in Florida and Texas. Sweet peas, which attract eastern tailed blue to gardens in the eastern half of the US, violets and thistle. But again, be sure to research the preferences of the butterflies you seek to attract. Number four, how should flowers be planted in a butterfly garden? A butterfly garden is not necessarily a neat and tidy looking garden. Each butterfly species fills a specific niche and tends to focus on flowers at certain heights. To attract more butterflies, you'll want a variety of heights and flower types. And number five, how do you maintain your butterfly garden? Well, one of the best things you can do is keep it pesticide free. Even organic pest control options can harm. You'll also want to pay attention to your local butterflies' population cycles. It's not enough to plant the plants that they thrive on. You'll also need to make sure that the plant's growth cycle aligns with the butterfly's reproductive cycle. So for example, if you're trying to attract monarchs, you may want to mow or cut milkweed and other host plants before the reproduction peak period. And if you use tropical milkweed instead of a native one, it's a good idea to cut it in the fall. So that covers the basics of starting a butterfly garden. But at this point, you may be wondering, why create one in the first place? Well, aside from the fact that butterflies are beautiful, they're also disappearing. Which brings me back to the town of Pacific Grove, California. This charming beachside community is the site of the annual monarch butterfly migration. Starting in December, Droves of the bright orange beauties descend on the town, creating an undulating tapestry of orange and red. But sadly, over the years, this carpet has become threadbare. And if you visit today, you will need to look hard to find a butterfly. The plight of the monarch has long been known, but until recently, no one had quantified just how badly the monarch's western population was faring. Now, a new analysis has confirmed what many have feared. The monarch population has dropped by nearly 99% since the 1980s. Unlike eastern monarchs, which travel to Mexico for the winter, western monarchs overwinter along the California coast. 
They cluster in swarms on Monterey pine and cypress, as well as the giant native redwoods. Then, when summer comes, they spread out across the west, searching for milkweed plants and mates. In the 1980s, over 10 million monarchs were thought to have wintered in towns like Pacific Grove. But in 2019 and 2020, the number plummeted to less than 30,000. Scientists aren't sure what is killing the butterfly, but studies of eastern populations indicate that the weed killer glyphosate used on soy and corn also kills the milkweed that monarchs need to survive. In the west, glyphosate is now used on crops such as almonds, alfalfa, and grapes. On top of this, the favored overwintering grounds of the monarch are also some of the highest value real estate in the state and are rapidly being developed. So what can be done? Well, one unusual feature about the new Western monarch data is that it was largely collected by citizen scientists. Without thousands of people who regularly upload their own counts of monarchs in their area, we would never have known the extent of their decline. So consider engaging in a citizen science project near you. And of course, you can also plant a butterfly garden. But what do you think? Do you have any stories about butterflies or butterfly gardens? Let us know in the comments. Did you like this video? You're going to love our Gokche Land Due Diligence program. We'll make you a land due diligence expert in just seven days. Check it out at gokchecapital.com slash glad. And while you're at our website, don't forget to explore our $1 down listings at gokchecapital.com slash listings. Finally, don't hesitate to reach out. You can email, call, or text, and we will respond as soon as possible. So thank you for listening and more to come.